the flip side is it pretty difficult to go through cancer in the public eye yeah. and uh, kind of an interesting take on culture and American culture. I've never been as famous as I was when I was sick. I Let's talk about that a little bit more. I mean, I'm interested in, in hearing that with regards to what did that entail um, in terms of was it an invasion of privacy type matter or was it was there more to it? Well, I, I don't think there was more to it. I just think people like either a underdog story or yeah. like death, right? Yeah. So like that's American culture. So, you know, I, like I said before, I had this incredible head of hair and like I was fit and I was a soccer player and survivor winner and champion. And I think people just wanted to get that picture of me bald and a walker yeah. with a mask and gloves. Like that's what they were looking for. That's makes money. That sells magazines. Yeah. You know, this is 2009. Yeah. Um, so I, and you, you do talk a lot about storytelling. And so for me, I wanted to take control of my own narrative. Yeah. And so I went public and I needed to get out before anyone else got out before it. And so whether that was a, uh, a choice I wanted to make or I was forced to make, I made that choice. I didn't know what would happen if I opened my life to complete strangers all over again, but it was a, in, it was a great choice. I ended up sharing my story with People Magazine. So I had a back in the day a vlog, if you can believe it. So I show the, the the highs, the lows, the, the the beauty, the ugly of going through cancer as a young adult. I don't think anyone had done it before, um, especially at this intimate level. Like I had them in the doctors' rooms with me, you know, crying, ball, like everything, mm -hmm. from fertility to relationships to family to community to exercising, food, all that stuff. I was sharing my story. Um, and what was interesting was the feedback I got was overwhelming in a positive way. Um, and I collect people, I'm sure you're in the same way, like putting your story out there, you get, you get people coming yeah. at you. And so like, since I've been public, I mean, I can't even count. I'm at 50, 60 people have reached out to me and said, because I saw you here, this interview there, or Katie Kirk there, blah, 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 there. I got, I had that same age. I went to the doctors. I got diagnosed earlier. And so playing some role in helping other people get diagnosed earlier or helping them manage their cancer care has made it worthwhile for me to talk about my story. Yeah. And uh, something I learned is that, like, I kind of live my life these days by like making sure to never let a crisis go to waste because it's an opportunity to do some really important things. So for me, in the middle of my nightmare, in the middle of this cancer diagnosis, sharing my story was and focusing on the plight of the other people helped me heal yeah and that's like scientifically proven like focusing on the challenges of other people helps you heal as a human being so if i could do this in the middle of my nightmare it would be a distraction of my reality of my own situation a cathartic kind of recovery and i'm helping people at the same time and so that was kind of how i used that horrible moment to make a great moment for a lot of other people Thank you for tuning in to this clip of the Mile 40 podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to watch the entire interview, please click here and be sure to subscribe below.